Hi, Dennis. Thank you so much for joining this podcast episode. Really appreciate it. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. So, yeah, thanks for having coming to the show. And like today, uh, we're super excited to learn more about yourself, your journey and being an entrepreneur. And yeah, we're going to share a few things like uh, the ups and downs you had over the years building the businesses. So our audience can take on something like a few lessons to learn from you. So yeah, I'd love to know more about yourself. Like, how did you end up being an entrepreneur? Is that you always wanted to do or like accidentally you become an entrepreneur? Well, probably a, a little over 20 years ago, I wanted to get my real estate license and I had worked in property management. That's like leasing apartments and condos. Mm -hmm. And I'd had a manager that just came to me and said, we don't want to lose you, but I see something in you. And I think the natural progression for you would be to get your real estate license. And so at the time, my kids had just gotten into school. I've been, you know, staying at home and I was met with people all around me that said, why would you want to do that? The industry is too saturated. Why would we want to lie in the garage walls with superficial pictures of signs with your face on it with no yard to stay? It'd be nothing more than an expensive hobby. And at the time in my life, I, I feel like I needed permission to take a leap of faith or pursue things because I didn't feel like I would be able to succeed if I didn't have support around me. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, in a nutshell, I just suppressed that dream. It never died, but I just kind of buried it because it, it wasn't going to be the right time for me. And I uh, had gotten out of that relationship and I'd been married almost 10 years. I went through a custody battle that cost over $50,000 and my mom had been misdiagnosed with a hernia and she actually had colon cancer and she went in just for a exploratory surgery. They found the encapsulated tumor. They removed it and the doctor came out. The surgeon said, we don't even, you don't have to do preventative chemo unless you want yeah. to. Well, we found out later um, that he had botched the surgery. He was in a hurry to get to a football game and left perforations all throughout her colon. And she was, you know, she passed a few months later. So I was dealing with oh, I'm so a sorry to custody that. battle. Yes, it was, it was a difficult, dark time, um, yeah. trying to grieve the loss of my mother walking through that. And so I went, I decided that I needed to rescue myself, but I needed to heal. And so I committed to getting therapy and really trying to work through and rediscover who I was. Mm -hmm. and what I wanted for my life. And so that was a big commitment. And um, fast forward to some happier times, I was working in an office and my FedEx guy walked in and you think, you know, FedEx guy, super friendly, really cute. Um, and we saw each other every day for about five years before our first date. Right. Well, from there, <laughs> from there, we quickly, we married, we blended five teenagers, and then we decided to both quit our jobs on the same day, which people thought, again, I'm surrounded by all these people that think we're crazy. Mm -hmm. They're like, you're leaving, you're leaving a job with benefits with, you know, you've got dental, you've got great insurance. Like, what are you doing? You have seven mouths to feed. We had $30,000 in the bank which doesn't go far, you know, you've yeah. got mortgages, you've got kids driving braces, incidentals, all the things. But we, I just knew, we knew together that we were supposed to take this leap of faith. So we did. We didn't do real estate right away either. Um, my husband, Troy had had a childhood friend convince him to get into financial services and go with this company. Well, he was telling us he was wildly successful and shortly after we both quit our jobs, we found out he was actually in bankruptcy. He was uh -huh. foreclosing on his house. And so it wasn't easy just because we took the leap. It, it wasn't easy. So we did a few things before arriving at deciding to do real estate. And once we both got our licenses together, we didn't have a paycheck for seven months. And I told Troy, I said, I've waited two decades to do what I'm called to do, what I'm supposed to do in this life. Yeah. And failure is not an option. And I want to take the negative seeds that some 
people planted in me so many years ago saying I couldn't do something. I couldn't stand out. I didn't have what it takes. I didn't have value. I wanted to take those and allow those to propel us into creating our own lane of authenticity and really not being afraid to be ourselves. And so with that, we created kind of a, uh, first of all, we created systems and processes and a, a bulletproof customer service experience. But on the creativity side, we really implemented really unique marketing approaches online to stop the scroll. So people, we were top of mind when, when people thought of real estate. And that's how we got involved with TV. We, we mm. used major TV shows, not just centered about, around real estate, but centered around topics that make a difference and impact the lives of others, like on Oprah, Steve yeah. Harvey. Um, so we view every time we're on a TV platform, when we're in the news, when we're in the papers or on news, on the radio, it always goes back to Denise and Troy Schroeder, Oklahoma City real estate agents. We always bring it back to real estate. And so we just, our, our uh, fourth episode of House Hunters HGTV just aired two weeks ago. That gets 96 million households that view it. So it was a really powerful Thing in our business to get them to come to Oklahoma. They didn't want to come to Oklahoma. We had to pitch them and negotiate mm. um, our way into getting them to come here. We're not a coastal city. We're one of the cheapest places to live in the country. I mean, how exciting can that be? But they came here and they love our city. And so they come back now four times for us. So that's exciting. And that's just using the art of storytelling to get on these platforms and do these these shows and you don't have to, you know, you may not be meant to do TV, but that yeah. doesn't mean you can't submit articles for human interest stories. Tell the stories of your clients. They're always looking for content. You know, what we're doing today, I'm podcast guesting. I volunteer speak, volunteer teach. There's so many things we can do to use the power of storytelling and just committing to being vulnerable sharing sometimes our mistakes and the darker parts of our stories to connect to other people. And I think once you realize that failure for me was my biggest teacher, it wasn't my grave digger. And once I wrapped my brain around the fact that I could have gratitude for those dark things that I went through because it, it molded me and made me the warrior I am today. So that that was a huge shift for me. And then after I lost my mom, I thought, wow, you know, I'm 49. She was 49 when she got diagnosed. We don't, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. Yeah. So we have to have a paradigm shift every day if we need to refresh our mind to live like we're dying. Because it when you lose someone like that, it changes everything. It changes molecularly who you are. And it no. really, it really catapulted me to push myself um, in so many ways after that loss. And when that thing actually happened, like how long ago, like you lost your mom and going through that court battle you had? Um, I went through that for about three years. Okay. So it was, it was pretty, it was pretty difficult to, um, I mean, I felt like just putting pop tarts. Was it long ago school. or like a recent... Oh, long ago. Okay. It was, I lost her 20 years ago. Oh, so, wow. so yes, it, it's yeah. been a while. Um, and it's still, the impact has never left me today. You know, it's, it's the same shift that I felt in my life as the day after she died to today. I've just been really intentional mm -hmm. about relationships and, you know, accomplishments, not, not letting anything go to waste. Yeah. Yeah, like, so you had, like, a terrible moment for three years, and then you made the shift in mm -hmm. your business, and everything has started to change. So what was your mindset, like, during the moment and making the shift? Like, how did you come up, like, I don't want to get victimized or whatever, whatever happening with me. I can change the fact, like, I have to go in through, like, I'm going to court, I lost my mom. Mm -hmm. What was your mindset, like, during the bad time? Like, did you need any kind of help, or, like, you was on your own, and you took the action? 
Well, I was really severely depressed and I'm a pretty positive, energetic person by nature. Mm. So I, I sought ther- a therapist and I can remember walking into her office and I said, look, I showed up because that's what I do. I show up for things, but I'm too broken to be fixed. You can try. I'll sit here, but I just don't think you can help me. Well, two years later, after I was going to her every week, and she said, we need to reprogram you and rewire you and your way of thinking so that you can crawl out of this hole, whether you have to climb, scratch, scream, and really heal the parts of you so the broken parts of you don't hurt other people. And that was really pivotal in my life was to learn that I didn't want unhealed parts of me to break other people. So I owed that to myself, to my kids, to my friends and family. And so that I probably wouldn't be where I am today if I wouldn't have sought outside help. Yeah. I mean, I know I wouldn't. I couldn't have done it on my own. Yeah. So then obviously you started your business with your partner, right? Mm-hmm. And you mentioned like seven months without paycheck. So yeah. how's that moment like? I, I know like you dealt with like a difficult moment losing your mom that's like emotional thing is happening with you like you're going through court battle and now you are facing financial struggle right you want a saving thirty thousand dollars you mentioned and no paycheck for seven months and you guys are a lot of people to feed in the same time so what you and your husband did on that during the seven months like how did you put believed in the business how did you move forward We were very frugal, you know, things were very shoestring budget, really tight in our house. I didn't want to spend any of the savings because I was so optimistic, Yeah. but we, we door knocked, we called everyone that we knew to try to rebrand ourselves as he's not the FedEx guy. I'm not the administrative assistant. We are real estate experts that you can put your largest investments in our Mm -hmm. hands. Um, we went to every educational opportunity that was available to us through my, my brokerage. It was very important to me to have, to be competent so I could bring people value and build our business quickly. It was really hard because, you know, we were doing all, we were planting all these seeds and I'm a farmer's daughter. So I understand the power. I watched my dad. He's been a farmer for 50 years, go and plant seeds and plow and disc before the harvest comes. And it's just this constant, you know, watering and nurturing of these seeds. And my dad used to always tell me, you're doing all the things, you're consistent, you're taking all the actionable steps you can humanly take, the harvest will come, it will come. So we had to just be faithful and steadfast in that. And it wasn't easy. There, there were days we wanted to quit. I was thinking, I waited 20 years to do this. And why is nothing happening? You know, I'm doing <laughs> yeah. all the things. And so, yes, we were tested, but I'm so glad that we just kept the faith and we kept pushing and we didn't give up because then we sold 40 houses the last five months of the year and the average agent sells four to eight houses a year. So that was really incredible. And I knew this is where I'm supposed to be. This is absolutely where I'm supposed to be. And today we're top 1%. We've sold about 650 homes in the last 10 years. So we definitely know we're where we're supposed to be. And selling yeah. homes is a byproduct of what we do. We serve people. That's what we do. Yeah. We serve people. Yeah, that's great. Like uh, knowing and having the vision, then actually mm-hmm. take care of like what's going on in the time moment. I know when I started my business, it was tough for first one yeah. year. Like, uh, and I was severely ill and my wife is working that time. So I was losing all of my saved up money and it was a tough time until like my, I remember that I was like, if we don't get client this month, then we don't have any money for like paying my rent and everything. And it's eventually, stressful. I, yeah. And eventually I got that client and actually start to yeah. work out things like that. And then fast forward, like less than five years, I built a seven figure business. But in the first year, that's two, amazing. It was tough. Yeah. And um, I think that, you know, my dad always taught me you know, the first five, 10 years of your business, you're not do- going on the traditional vacations all the time. No, you're pouring your money back into your business. And it's a yep. season of sacrifice. And I think people forget that it's like my clients that are 25 want the house that their parents have, you know, in their 50s. It just mm-hmm. doesn't, it doesn't happen that way. It's true. 
like I'm, I'm gonna be 29 like uh, next year in april still haven't got a house yet like everyone's like a, I, I don't even tell them like my figure and everything everyone asks oh you look like a multi-millionaire but why are you living in a rented house we don't get it i was like you <laughs> you'll get, get there <laughs> yeah i was like, main thing is, like yeah. yeah because obviously you know yourself like right now we are going through a recession and everything will be on a right. sale like you know like as you're, doing the, you're doing the right thing interest yeah. rates are higher and if you'll wait just a little bit you're going to be in a lot better position mm. to get a better deal on a house there are some people that can't wait you know there's yeah. life changes but with the position you're in you can wait so i would yeah house wise is a great it's gonna be like a market gonna go down i know that yes. but other things like if i have the money i can do more marketing for my business so my yes. seven figure business i can take it to eight figure because I have the cash, oh, wow. I can yes. invest in the tech startups. That's what I do as an angel investor. Like, love mm -hmm. tech companies gonna be on sale. Love companies gonna be on sale, and also there is bitcoins, crypto, and everything. You probably seen like all gone down. Like that's why I invest in. So everything on a sale. So if I have the money for the next couple of years, like a cash, then I can maximize my profiting on that. So probably I'm gonna buy a half a million dollar house right now. But if I wait another four or five years, I can buy like a 10 million worth of house. That's not my goal anyway. I don't want that big house. I'm happy with a quarter million dollar house, which is like a slightly three, four bedroom house in the UK. And I don't yeah. want bigger than that. I don't want to clatter on my life. I like to be frugal and everything. Yeah. So and your market it. may crash a little bit harder than ours. In, in Oklahoma, we usually yeah. see a more minimal crash um so we still have people buying but it has slowed the buyers down mm. with the interest rates you know you will have a you'll have a tax write-off and you'll have an appreciating asset but for for what your plan is it makes sense to continue to pour into the business right now and then pay cash yeah yeah that, that's the main thing like i don't believe in uh, getting a loan and interest mm -hmm. base or anything uh I use credit card in past and I know like how it piles up the whole interest and uh, it's since in I trouble. Probably, <laughs> yeah and I stopped it I stopped using a credit card now I use it but I don't go for like I'm not buying something if I don't have the cash from my pocket already yeah if I know like uh, I can't pay off the whole balance by end of the month I wouldn't buy anything so yes. make sure like uh, I'm paying off so it's for credit score and everything you need as a business owner like if you want to get a phone line or something or like office space you need a credit score. So that's where you. Oh my out. gosh. It's insane. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? We yeah. paid off all our debt and then our credit score went from like 800 and something to zero. Oh, wow. Like, because oh, society on. wants us to have a credit. They want us yeah. to have credit. They want us to have debt. Yeah. So that, that was wild. We had to build our credit back up after we paid off our debt. Definitely. Yeah. And that's, that's the most important part. And especially like you on a real estate zone, then finances and everything all you right. needed. So yeah, Dennis, I love to ask you like, what's the best lesson you have learned over the 20 mm -hmm. years of your experience in a building business? I think not allowing someone else to steal my dreams because they didn't have one of their own and surrounding myself with a tribe of people, not, not yes people, but giving people permission to pour into my life, to hold my feet to the fire, to give me accountability, but also to be one of the first ones with their pom-poms in their pocket, to, you know, to cheer me on in yeah. even the smallest of victories or to be there with me, you know, digging in the dirt when I'm, when I'm struggling, but we are the average of the five people we hang out with the most. It, it, it is true. And so mm -hmm. we've been intentional with mentors and coaches and, hanging out with people that have gone before us and they're highly successful. And it doesn't just have to be in real estate. I mean, we watch models of all different industries on how people do business differently. And also are they living life beautifully, personally and professionally? Like that's important yeah. to us. We want to have margin in our life and quality time with our families. It's really easy sometimes, especially when you work with your spouse to allow your your career to swallow your relationship. And we didn't want that to happen to us. So it's it's a constant choice in time blocking white space for us to spend time together as well without talking about real estate. Yeah, that's important. And I, I know like you're a family person yourself, like uh, you got your partner, you got kids. So how do you work out your time? Like how do you prioritize like what's important and what's not? 
right now we have an empty nest and I waited a really long time. I just wrote a book about the unique marketing approaches that we've used to exponentially grow. I waited to do that till my kids were out of the house because you don't get quiet time when you have five kids in the house. Mm. So now that we're empty nesters, we have more flexibility to have time for ourselves. It's just, you have to be committed to do it. So we put date nights like on the calendar. And I know that sounds so unromantic and it's <laughs> not like so spontaneous, but if you don't, you can, it's just like, if I don't exercise first thing in the morning, it doesn't get done. I lose willpower as I go throughout yeah. the day. And it's the same thing. You have to prioritize the things that are most important to you. And my relationship is more important than my business. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, we are coming to end of this podcast. So before I ask you the last question, I'd love to know where anyone can find you online. What's the best place to, to reach out? I would love for you to find me on Instagram at Denise, D-E-N-I-S-E, Sells Oklahoma, super easy. And then you can find my book on Amazon. It's called Out of the Box and it's applicable to any small business owner. So I really hope to inspire and encourage and motivate people into action and take those leaps of faith because we don't know if we have tomorrow. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. So my last question will be like, uh, Dennis, uh, what is your mission right now for like mm -hmm. doing for people or like your business? Well, I've moved from proving myself to being very purposeful. That's why I wrote the book and now I'm volunteer teaching and I'm starting to do some real estate coaching, marketing consulting, but I'm wanting to speak to people to make a difference, to make an impact, because I want people to understand that even if you're going through a really dark period, I want to be that person on the other side of the tunnel with the light on that's saying, you can do this, you can make it to the other side. And so after I've gone through what I've gone through, I realized that the most amazing things that have ever happened to me have happened on the other side of really sheer terror. And so we just have to get out of our comfort zone and surround us with people that will push us to do so. When we don't have the strength to. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming to this podcast. Uh, it's been a great having a pleasure uh, talking to you today. And I wish you best of luck with the business. Thank and you. And, thank you so yeah. much i wish you well on your business as well it sounds like you're doing amazing thank you thank you really appreciate it so yeah that's a wrap guys thank you so much for listening to this podcast episode i hope you enjoyed it and got some value from it so if anyone want to learn more about dennis or reach out to her I'll just visit our website and find her on the social media platforms so yeah until then i'll talk to you in the next episode take care